Hello everyone. With uh, today's lecture, we'll cover module 16 of this course, Firewalls, and that is for CON 8413 Construction Building Code. Before we move on, a reminder, first and foremost, to download and or print out the course notes from Brightspace. This again is module 16. You want to make sure that you're not just going to Brightspace to access these uh, course notes because you never know when they'll disappear from Brightspace. For example, it is typical that on the day of the final exam, they're no longer visible. Great. First of all, what is a firewall? Well, a firewall in general terms is a fire separation uh, that has a very large fire resistance rating. And typically it's built of non-combustible construction. So think uh, concrete blocks, poured concrete. It is meant to be continuous and it provides protection from the footing level all the way to the roof level and then some. Uh, firewalls are quite interesting, but let's look first at how the building code specifically identifies and defines firewall. If we're looking for a definition, you now know that we go to division A, and that's in part one. In this case, we would find the definition for firewall in article 1.4.1.2. I'll just read out to you what's on the screen. Firewall means a type of fire separation of non-combustible construction, which subdivises a building or separates adjoining buildings to resist the spread of fire, and which has a fire resistance rating as prescribed in this code and has structural stability to remain intact under fire conditions for the required fire rated time. So as usual, as we know by now, this is usually a bit of a mouthful, but hopefully by the time this lecture is over, you'll have a bit of a better understanding about uh, what firewalls do. So one thing about firewalls is that uh, they have to benefit uh, because they have to go all the way from the footing level to the roof and then some, they can best basically separate uh, a building in two, say. So in this case, you can see over here, this one large building, by the addition of a firewall, actually becomes two large buildings. And that's because the building code allows you uh, to essentially subdivide the building into as many smaller buildings as they're created by the addition of those firewalls. So some of the advantages of the firewall, of inserting the firewalls include that, that now, once you have a firewall, because the bird building area is smaller, then you have to comply with less restrictive building classifications. You can basically go from a part three building to a part nine building, which comes with a lot of advantages. It helps with separating a number of different types of major occupancies, it is very useful for additions and renovations. And because they, uh, their purpose is to prevent the spread of fire throughout various parts of a building, they reduce uh, the possibility of business losses and therefore reduce uh, insurance premiums. So let's look at the three basic requirements of firewalls. The first one is that a firewall must be continuous as a barrier. It has to be continuous uh, to prevent smoke and fire from traveling from one part of a building to another. Two, it must be non-combustible. And as you know by now, we've discussed what non-combustible means uh, in previous lectures. Typically though, this means that they're usually made out of masonry, which is the fancy engineering word for concrete blocks or concrete. However, if you go and check out what I wrote for you in your course notes, you'll see that there is an exception to the use of uh, concrete or masonry. Finally, one of the final requirement of a basic firewall is that its structural stability must remain intact uh, for the duration of its fire rating. So what that means is the firewall, if it's meant to be vertical for four hours, it must stay in place for at least that duration, okay? Now let's look at this a little bit in more detail. Let's talk about the collapse prevention. So basically, as you can see here, this firewall goes all the way from the top of the footing, all the way even through the roof. It must stay vertical even when the left-hand side of the building is collapsing. 
in the event of a fire. That is true even if the firewall is a double firewall. Maybe you need twice the amount of fire rating, so you double up on the firewall. If the left-hand side firewall collapses, then the right-hand right side one must collapse as well in order for the right-hand side of the building to stay up. Okay, so that's what is meant by uh, prevention of collapse. In addition to this, the fire ratings of firewalls are fairly sub substantial. So you can see here, when it comes to EF1 and F2 occupancies, we're looking at four hours. A, B, C, D, and F3, it's two hours. And this fire rating must only be achieved when you're using masonry or concrete. However, do check up that exemption uh, that is indicated in the building code for you. Uh, firewalls then also have to be continuous. So that means that they go all the way from the top of the footing to all the way to the roof. In this case, you can see that it stops at the roof, but that's because in the requirement of 3.1.10.32, the roof is poured as concrete. However, if that's not the case, then your firewall must go through the roof to create a parapet. And as you can see in these two images, which are also reproduced for you in your course notes, the parapet can either be 150 millimeters tall or 900 millimeters tall. What's the difference? Well, it has to do with the fire rating of the firewall that's penetrating the roof. If it's only two hours, it only needs to be 150 millimeters tall, minimum. If it's four hours, it needs to be at least 900 millimeters tall. Okay, there are also requirements for firewalls in the event that you have adjoining uh, stories. So that is, if one story is taller than the other, kind of the way that it's shown here, you can see that if it's more than three meters or 3,000 millimeters, then that uh, parapet, that firewall, does not need to extend above the roof. Okay, let's talk a little bit about combustible uh, projections. I'm going to put up the definition for the building code uh, that the building code gives for combustible uh, projections. So this is what the building code says related to combustible projections. If buildings are separated by a firewall, combustible projections on the exterior of one building, including balconies, platforms, canopies, eave protections, sorry, eave projections and stairs, that extend outward beyond the end of a firewall shall not be permitted to be within 2,400 millimeters, that's 2.4 meters, of combustible projections or windows and doors openings on the adjacent building. Why is that? Well, basically what this is saying is that in the event that you have um, uh, projections that are combustible, so projections say are balconies that are made out of wood, these cannot be closer than 2,400 millimeters to prevent fire from jumping from one to the next, okay? So that's the idea. This minimum distance for these combustible projections are required to prevent fire from transferring from one area to the other if there is a firewall between those parts of a building. Very well. The other thing that I'd like to point you towards is uh, table 1.2.2.1 under division C of the building code. It's an interesting table because it actually outlines for you all the requirements of general review, whether by architects or professional engineers or both. So basically you'll be able to see what the building code says must be reviewed by an architect and only an architect must be reviewed by a professional engineer, and only a professional engineer must be reviewed by both or one or the other. And the list is very interesting. Okay, so please also read this article regarding the buildings divided by firewalls. That's Division A, 1.1, 1 .1, 0.3, 0.1, 1. Great.
believe it or not, that's it. But there is a, a few things that I'd like to chat with you about, which are, don't forget to print out and especially download to your laptop the course notes for this topic, module 16. They're on Brightspace. But please don't simply assume that because they're there, they'll be there any and every time you need them. Download them now, please. Also, what about module 17? You'll have noticed that there are no course notes on Brightspace for this. Well, that's because module 17 is set up as a self-study assignment. Basically, it's a reading assignment. It's already posted. Yes, it's already there. And it comes with its own set of homework. So do that as well. Also, your Brightspace page. It's not going to be available after this term is over. Okay, so if there's anything you want to download from that Brightspace page, do it now. Okay, don't forget, do it now, please. All the course material that you're looking for, if you think it's useful and worthwhile, download it to your laptop right now. Otherwise, when it's gone, it's gone. And typically, course notes disappear on the day of the final exam. Okay, that's it. I want to thank you for your time. Below in the description, there should be a link probably to a previous module. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and uh, good luck. Take care.